Hey everybody, Amy with Garden Up. Today I want to talk about juniper scale. So I've got my crew with me. We have a big juniper behind us that is infested with juniper scale. And so I want to talk a little bit about what it is, why it's a problem, um, and what to do about it. So I have lots of books on these subjects. Okay, landscape plant problems. This one's a, a really great book for just figuring out what the bug is. It's not, it doesn't say anything beyond that. It just says what the bug is and it describes the bug. So if we flip to, the, and it organizes it by the plant, which is super convenient because it's alphabetized by the plant the pathogen might be on. So junipers get a few different diseases, twig blight, rust, witch's broom, but it also gets web worm and juniper scale. So this in here says exactly what it is. This scale, Calru laspis juniperi, this word right here, is an round off-white and 1 16th inch in diameter. It has a central yellow-brown dot, heavy infestations, result in loss of vigor and color. It also attacks arborvitae, cypress, and red cedar. It's a bug that makes an armor shell kind of like a turtle it sticks itself to the branch and once it does that you can't topically treat it so it's already got its little shield so most uh most chemicals can't pen penetrate that so it's really important when you're dealing with a pest pathogen to know what your pathogen is and you have to understand its life cycle there is one generation per year of this bug Adult females overwinter on the plant, already pregnant. Their eggs are fertilized, and they usually have about 40 of them per female, okay? And they, they overwinter under their little shell with their eggs, and then in the spring, mid-May-ish, those eggs hatch, and about 10 to 14 days later, the little crawlers come out and start to find new new places to live on the branches so today is May 21st I'm hoping we see crawlers and if that's the case this is the time to treat it this is the time to spray um, or do whatever kind of treatment you want to do so I have a lot of stuff here what we're gonna do today is first diagnose so I already know it's a scale, but I really want to get a close-up picture of what it looks like, so I brought my microscope. I also brought a hand lens. Okay, these are fun, Aww. little loop lens. I brought eyeglasses just in case, eye covers, because you never know. So to actually deal with the pest, once we've diagnosed it, we're going to start pruning it out. This is one of the easiest ways to get rid of scale, is just prune it out, because you can't do anything once it's attached to the juniper or plant. You can't really spray it, you can't do anything. It doesn't squish like normal bugs do, okay? But you can prune out the infested branches, and so that's one of the best ways. Loppers, and I have hand pruners, big and small, because junipers. I also brought my saws, but I don't think we're going to need that much. A couple words about gloves. I don't normally wear gloves when I'm gardening unless I'm dealing with something that's really pokey or it's really cold or for some reason I want my hands covered. Other than that, I bare hand everything. With junipers, I do wear gloves because they're pokey and these pokey little leaves actually secrete a toxin that itches, it irritates our skin. It's not going to hurt us really, it's just really irritating. So I do wear gloves with junipers. Now, having said that, when you're pruning a woody shrub, if you accidentally get your finger in the way and you're wearing gloves, you won't feel it until you've cut your finger off. If you're not wearing gloves, you'll feel it and probably will have time to react, okay? So, pros and cons, positives, negatives, you now have both sides of the safety story. Think for yourself and do what works for you on that one, okay? Once we've pruned it all out, if crawlers are present, I'm gonna try to spray it, okay? So I've got a couple different things I wanna try. I, this is the only sprayer I've ever used before because we're a little gardening company. We don't do a lot of spraying. And all I really spray with is dish soap and peppermint anyway, you know? So it's like, we just usually use little hand bottles or we use this thing. And then I was at the nursery this morning and I saw these and I thought, why not? Let's try it. <laughs> because trying to spray these giant junipers with this little spray bottle is gonna be a massive waste of time. These, I hook it up to the hose and we're done. Theoretically should still work if we get the crawlers. I've only ever used dish soap on scale once. It was on a rose last year, it was completely infested, 
And it worked. It did work. The scale is not nearly as bad this year. It's still there, so it didn't work perfectly, but it's not as bad. Um, I also brought neem oil. This is the actual normal thing you would use for scales, and again, you have to apply it right now. So I went to like all the different universities' websites last night. Of course, I have Washington State University because we have to. Hello. <laughs> so they don't say much on their website, though. It's kind of incomplete, really. This one is from is HGIC Clemson, but it's got a real complete write-up with pictures. So as far as control, the presence of adults or crawlers determines which treatment will be most effective. Use a 2 or 3% horticultural oil mix okay, as a dormant spray in the late winter or very early spring before new growth occurs to control adult females by suffocation. A 2% solution is made with 5 tablespoons of horticultural oil per gallon of water and most insecticides are effective only against the crawlers. Different types of controls, okay, so there's cultural controls which are the first uh, means of action you really want to take. And what I mean by cultural controls is make sure the culture of the plant is healthy, right? Is your plant healthy? Is it getting sufficient water? Is it getting sufficient nutrients? Stuff like that. If your plant is not healthy, it's going to open up immune system, for lack of a better term, to pests like scales. And so if it's practical to improve the plant site to reduce the stress on the plant, that's the best way to treat any insect before you go for chemical controls. Another one is uh, biological controls, like bugs. But there's not very many bugs that eat scales because they can't get to them. The crawlers, great, yeah, again, ladybugs, lacewings, there's parasitic wasps. They'll eat the crawlers all day long, but the crawlers are only out for a few days. So your options are really limited there. Um, so insecticidal sprays are another one. Again, horticultural oils kill by suffocation or after penetrating overwintering stages of the insect. There are some systemic insecticides if you want to go that route. I don't do those with my company though, so I don't know much about them. So here's the damage done by scales. You know, you can see the little dots. So where you're going to look for the crawlers is actually on the healthy stuff. Oh, here. There's a lot of them over here. Yeah. So. You see all the little little white dots? Yeah. Those are the scales. On the a lot green of them. Are... Yeah, look are on the green. Kidding? Nope. Not kidding. Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> oh, there we go. You guys come behind me and you can see the screen here. Oh my gosh. So you see those big, uh, big spots. I don't see any crawlers, so we might have missed our opportunity. Okay, so this is what fell off of a juniper. Those are scales that fell off. I'm trying to see if there are any crawlers in this. Okay, so we saw the scales, but I did not see any crawlers. So it may not be worth um, spraying at this point. But what we are going to do to take care of this bug is we're going to prune out as much as we can. So I'm going to go back as far as I can with each branch. I'm going to prune it out. I'm going to have my bucket full of soapy water. Okay, this is a preventative measure because I don't want this stuff falling off and then finding its way back. Okay, if there are crawlers on here. And I also don't want it spreading while it's in the truck on the way to the dump. Okay, I don't want air blowing the crawlers off and getting on other people's. I mean, that's just not right. So I'm going to take a quick second, cut it off, dip it in the soapy water, and then throw it on my tarp. Okay? I don't know if it's good for anything. There's no scientific studies on this, okay? But that just makes sense to me. I'm going to dip it in the soap to kill anything that is alive and then throw it on my tarp so I can't spread it to other, other landscapes. So the thing about pruning junipers and any evergreen, okay, is you cannot go back into the dead zone. If you cut into the dead zone, it'll be dead looking forever. It never comes back from that. So you can only go back to where it's green. We may not get all of the scale because we're only going back to where it's green. Um, but we're going to do our best. So just grab a branch, find a good spot where there's a lateral branch, 
like a node, okay? Cut it off. We're gonna do that with pretty much every branch on the shrub. We want to, the goal here is two things. We're trying to prune out the scale. We're also trying to reduce the size of the shrub just a little bit. Because, you know, 90s landscaping, it's the shrub that ate the house, right? But uh -huh. she really loves her juniper. She likes the privacy they give her and all that. So she's happy with the plants. We just want to make sure they are healthy. So see the figure, there's, there's no major split in the branch. No, no, no. You're not looking for a split. You're just looking for a lateral branch. Okay. So like this. Any of these. But you see how much scale is up here? I do. Yeah. You want to get all of that out. I and want you to take as much scale as I can. Yeah. And you want so to I take. So I come back to here. Yes. Yes, exactly. And you want to take it back as far as you can. One, for the scale, and two, because we're trying to reduce the size of the shrub. All right, but I'm, not, I'm going to worry more about the scale than any yeah. uh, evenness in the Yes, pruning. yeah. We want it to look natural, so you don't want it to be even in the pruning. Okay. Okay? Okay, so here is a branch that is completely infested with adult scales. So these are the adults that have already sent their spawn off to re-infect the rest of the juniper. But I want to see what happens to them if we dunk it in soap, if anything changes. So these have been dunked in soap. I finally found some crawlers on this branch here. I saw them, I swear. Where did they go? They are so tiny. Oh wow, there's a... Yep, there's one. Oh, look at all the scale right here. Oh, there's another one. Oh, he's moving. Okay, so when you prune a juniper, ideally, you want it to look like it has not been pruned. You still want it to look natural. Over here looks really good. You take it about a foot off of here at least, right? Yeah, at least. Yeah, and you cannot see any um, cut branches unless you get like right up close, like there's one. But other than that, there's not very many. This one you could take back a little farther, okay. so that cut branch gets hidden. Um, we uncovered a potentilla, that was interesting. And then over here, so this is, this is a tricky area, because the scale is so infested right here. It's super bad, but we're already back into the dead zone. So we can't cut it back any farther, but we want to still take out the scale. So. You're going to still take off the ends and get as much of the scale gone as you can. Um, and then, yeah, let me show what you're doing with your rake, little hand rake. When you find dead zone like this, you can come in, clean out that dead so it doesn't look so messy. Yeah, see that opens it up a lot, makes it look a lot greener, a lot less dead. And then over here, oh, it's been working. Things are looking pretty good. There was another heavy infestation, but not quite as bad as the other side. You've taken it back at least a foot. And yeah, this looks really good because there's not that many ends. You've got a couple ends here, but if you trim them back a little bit farther, they'll hide. They'll just like kind of camouflage in and get covered by the other branches. Okay, so here's the after. We've managed to get quite a bit of the infestations out. Unfortunately, we did get really close to the dead zone in a couple spots. So we cleaned it out, you know, didn't spend a whole lot of time in there, but we took a lot of the dead stuff out so that at least it's not a big wall of nasty dead stuff. And there's still quite a bit of scale on these branches. For the most part, we were able to get a lot of it out. At this moment, we were not able to spray because we could not get the nozzle that's already on the hose off to put the attachment on. But there is going to be a spray company that comes and puts a chemical on it, so hopefully they get here quickly because the crawlers are out moving right now, and now is the time to spray. If they miss this opportunity now, then we have to wait till next spring to try to spray again. But that's juniper scale in a nutshell. This is what scale ultimately does to a shrub. If the infestation gets really bad, it can kill the entire branch and eventually the entire plant. So this section here is quite infested and mostly dead, so we're gonna take out this whole section all the way up to here because it's gonna die real soon anyway, so we might as well just get ahead of it.